Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Katie. And what are we here to do? Well, I bet you couldn't have guessed it from the thumbnail or the title or maybe this, but it's a weekly reading vlog. That's right, kids. But let's really get to the nitty gritty. Let's break through all of that and get to what you really want to know. How far am I into the Vampire Diaries? Ah, oh, thank you for asking. Okay, I am on season eight, episode one. I mean, that's where I am as of the end of this video because I'm filling, filming the intro at the end. You already know how this whole weekly reading vlog goes. I am on the beginning of season eight. It's a totally different show. What is even going on right now? Like this feels like a total divergence and I'm very happy that this is the ending because I don't want to watch The Vampire Diaries anymore. I don't watch anymore. It's like, it's like I do, like I wish I was still watching The Vampire Diaries, but that's not what I'm watching anymore. And I'm like, what is even going on? This is like, not even just another show. This is like a spinoff of a spinoff of The Vampire Diaries. And I'm like, not really with it, but Bonnie looks so freaking good. She looks so good. Oh Bonnie looks so sexy and so does Caroline. Like Bonnie more so, I mean, Caroline's hot. Don't get me wrong. I love Caroline so much, but Bonnie is literally like a goddess. Walking. if you heard that. My blood sugar is low. I'm about to eat right after I make this clip. But anyway, that is uh, my cue to tell you what we're actually doing in this vlog. And that is reading a handful of books. I am going to be reading Fence Volume 1. I'm also going to be reading The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb and The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chachki and Crying in H Mart um, by Michelle Zimmerman? That's not even close. That is not even close to what her name is. Oh my god, I'm sorry. The title will be up here letting you know. Um, one of these books I DNF in the video. Go ahead and take your guesses as to which one it is. And then I have um, a couple other really good stars of books, like all fours and fives. So you go ahead and guess. Other than that, let's just jump right into this reading vlog. Welcome to the first day of the vlog, and we're already on a time crunch. Yikes. Um, the first book I'm going to pick up is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chachki. I have been looking forward to this book for so long, and I want to read it so bad, and it's also, like, one of my favorite covers. I'm obsessed with this cover. Do you see this? Like, green is my favorite color. I love it, and I love gold. But I have a hold on Libby for the audio, and it's due in, like, a little less than two days. Yikes. And I don't work today, but I do work tomorrow. So, you know, listen, I can do it, but I don't know if I'm going to want to read it that fast because I'm really looking forward to this book. So I might, it's either going to go one of two ways. I'm either going to listen to all of it in these two days, or I am going to listen to as much of it as I conceivably can while still enjoying it and then buy the audio because I don't know if I want to finish it physically. Like, I'm going to follow along with it physically, but I am just now trying to climb out of, like, a giant reading slump. You would have already seen that, but... <sighs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. All I know about this book is that it's about, like, a group of characters that are trying to steal, like, an ancient artifact, and that they're all, like, dangerous, like, experts, and it happens in, like, the glittering underbelly of Paris. That's all I need to know. I'll hit you back uh, later today when I'm a little bit farther into it and then tell you what it's about. Guys, I have not even got to the part where we really even know what the book is about. Like I'm 16% of the way in and they have found this like artifacty kind of thing that's like a hidden map, I think. Anyway, all, who cares? Who cares? Everybody move aside, Severin and Layla. We're only 16% of the way in. Does it? Does it get hotter? <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> does it get hotter? Because, oh my God. I love them.
just got out of the shower. I am about 46% of the way through the book and I'm absolutely loving it. I was talking to Grace about it a couple hours ago on the phone and I got like two minutes into talking about it and she was like, stop, stop, stop talking because I want to read this book. Like when you finish it, just tell me if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if it's a thumbs up, I'm going to read it because I am absolutely obsessed with Six of Crows and I got her to watch the TV show. And she fell in love with the TV show of Shadow and Bone. And then she read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I was like, I bought the audiobook for you. They're sent. Read them now. And she did. And she absolutely adored them. And I told her, I was like, literally, The Gilded Wolves is Six of Crows. Like, it is. I feel like people have said on the internet that that's not true. And they're like, stop saying it's like Six of Crows. And I'm like, how am I wrong? Like, how am I wrong? It, like, legit... Is Six of Crows. This here is supposed to be Severin, who, like, tell me he doesn't look like Kaz. This is Layla. So, okay, Layla is, like, the Inej kind of thing, and then this is, uh, um, Zofia. But here's the thing. It's, like, Zofia would be the Nina in Six of Crows, but this character is the Inej, but she acts like Nina, but then has the storyline of Inej. Oh, can you hear my chicken nuggets? Um, and then this is, like, the storyline of Nina, but the characteristics of Inej. And then you have um, Enrique, who is exactly like Jesper. Like, literally exactly like Jesper. And he's gay and has the hots for this guy, Hypnos, who I'm literally obsessively in love with. He's fucking amazing. I love him. And um, this is Tristan, who is exactly like Wylan. Like, exactly like Wylan. even looks like Wylan. Like, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. But also, I'm obsessed. So, I don't really... The summary made it seem like, oh, they have to go on this, like, Babel got, like, is asking them to go and find this artifact, but did I miss that? Because I think that each of them has their own reason why they want to get it, and I am a little bit confused about a couple of the reasons. Like, I totally understand um, Layla's reason. Her backstory is Thing. wild uh, wild amazing oh my god um but a couple of them like I don't understand the patriarchy thing if you've read the book I'm I'm not really 100% on what's going on there I think that Tristan and Severin like their brotherhood is so beautiful I love that backstory I love um Enrique's relationship with all of them I love Zofia's relationship with all of them I think it's just very dynamic very good Hypnos's relationship with all of them oh my god he is so funny he is hilarious <laughs> he just keeps popping in and he's like tell me i'm pretty i'm like oh God, i love him i love him whoo okay um severin is hot obviously uh layla's hot obviously tristan like legit has no storyline really other than having a pet tarantula but like i'm down to ride i love it oh my god i feel like i've talked so much but i'm really 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 liking this book this is definitely something I told Grace earlier. This is a book, just like Six of Crows, where I am going to listen to the audio and I'm going to listen to it like, I'm not listening to it too fast. I'm listening to it at 1.75 or 1.85 the speed, which is nothing. That's like basically normal speaking for me. So I'm listening to it really slow in terms of like what I normally do. But I'm reading it back to back to back very quickly, not really going back and like listening to parts again, which I normally would. And the reason I'm doing that is because just like Six of Crows, when I read the book the first time, I just needed to like read it. I just needed to read it, get through it like it's a fan fiction. And then I can go back and physically read it and tab and annotate in it because I already know that I'm like this book. I'm going to love it. Like I, I'm really like knocking on all the wood that nothing happens that makes me dislike this book. But it's a little disappointing in uh, the way that it's like, that's something that I need to do for this book is just get through it. Just get through it so that I can read it again. Because then it's like, yeah, the uh, excitement will be gone. The surprise. But I know myself and I need to just fall in love with these characters so that I can enjoy the storyline. Like, I'm a big character reader, so I need to just fall in love with the characters, have the fan fiction-y moments with the characters, then I can go back and appreciate the book in its entirety. This has been the longest clip of all time, and I need to go get my chicken nuggets. So, uh, goodbye.
Yo, I am cleaning my makeup brushes while I listen to The Gilded Wolves because we need to do a bunch of chores to listen to our audiobook so we can get this shit done before the audiobook expires on Libby. So I'm cleaning my makeup brushes and I'm going to show you something. <sighs> this stuff, it's called Cinema Secrets. Um, it's from Pro Cosmetics. I don't know. It's Cinema Secrets. It's a makeup brush cleaner. It's on Amazon. This is not sponsored or sent to me or anything, but this shit ex is so expensive. It is so expensive, but when I tell you it's worth it, like I'm somebody who I hate cleaning my makeup brushes because it just takes so long and it's tedious and it's annoying. It's like folding laundry. It's so annoying and it's just like not satisfying. But when I tell you this stuff is black magic, it fucking works. It's so crazy and it's so fast. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, this is like really pricey. It's like 50 bucks, which is insane, but like, Obviously, it, you don't use all of it at once. And then it's like quick drying. Like it dries so fast. It's freaking nuts. I'm going to show you a couple examples of like how it works. And let me tell you, you're going to be literally blown away. I'm here to do a little wrap up of The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Tchotchke, but um, you're gonna see in the background that I have some notes written down here. We're gonna be um, referring to those as we go because I don't know. I don't know. And I very luckily did watch a video where somebody talked about this, where they said that they read the first book and just thought that it was like, okay, it was good, fine, whatever. But then they read the next book, which is like Silvered Serpents or something and loved it. And they were like, you need to, you need to get through this, understand the characters, kind of get into the world a little bit, and then you'll love it. And I really, really like hearing that because that's how I felt in this book. I was like, felt unfortunately kind of meh. Like I was enjoying the ride and it was, listen here, when people say this is not like Six of Crows, bitch where? Like it is, it is like Six of Crows. I'm not saying it's the same. And I think that like one thing that you should really know is that it is very similar to Six of Crows, except Rashani like took on so many cultural, like um, racist, xenophobia, like so many of those elements that a lot of other books like wouldn't really cover and that Six of Crows definitely did not cover in this way. And like such an amazing look at like not only the way that like racism and classism and xenophobia exists, but the way that it is treated within those groups and even in more minute ways and the way that it is represented in characters themselves, like the way that they feel. And I really, really enjoy that, especially like in an Asian culture, because this is an Asian author. Do they have, oh my God, fucking stunning photo. When I saw this photo, I was like, how dare you be this hot and this smart? It's not fair and creative excuse me and also have the prettiest book of all time anyway whatever but the asian culture in this book and the A asian representation of like um because when people just talk about like asian racism there's so much more to it 
than just that like just like oh yeah asian racism it's like okay but there's a difference between like just asian racism and like japanese and filipino and uh chinese and taiwan like taiwanese good god katie anyway um stuff like that like there's all these minute groups of asian racism and the way that like asian racism like is racist toward each other do you know what i'm saying like in subgroups of that I'm going on a tangent. That was really good in this. I also really like that not only is there a lot of, um, like, gay representation, there is bisexual characters, there is poly relationships, which I was like, well, it doesn't happen yet, but you're just like, hello? Roshani, I see you. I see you. I have to read the second book to see if it happens. I love it. But I will say, this book was very confusing it was very confusing. Like, I was just like, wait. Like, I get that it's very intelligent. Like, the book is really smart. But I didn't like that, like, the puzzles. Because it's kind of like a Da Vinci Code kind of thing. Like, very Dan Brown. But there's a lot of puzzles that are put in there that you cannot solve it for yourself. You can't. Like, at least with Dan Brown. And I don't mean this because I've read any of his books. Because I haven't. But several of my friends do love Dan Brown and talk about it. And they say that, like, some of the puzzles maybe you couldn't figure out because you're not like that smart, but like a lot of them you could deduce for yourself. Like you put the pieces together, but in this book, you can't, you cannot solve them. Like, it's just impossible. Like you'd have, you not only could you be a genius, but you would have to like really sit there and be like, what, what? And you'd have to like already have a full grasp of this world. So I didn't like that. I love solving puzzles. And these, I was just like, okay, okay get to the point. Cause I'm not going to get this. So that I was a little disappointed by. I also felt like the world was confusing like not like it's not confusing like the author didn't do a good enough job necessarily I don't know that's why I'm like nah like I'm just like it was good but I also was like what are you talking about like some of the things I liked like okay I really liked that um Severin's seven foster parents like his fathers were named after the seven deadly sins i thought that was very interesting it made his backstory very dynamic i really like that like it added such an extra element that really kept me invested and then also the garden that like there were seven different circles like layers and it was the seven de deadly sins that was fantastic but i did not understand the magical system like really pretty much at all I was just like what like okay I was very confused on like who had like ma material magic and like who had like mental magic like there were some characters and I'm pretty sure what it was with that the material magic like where they could take something and turn it into something else was more elite than the ones who could like make you think things and I was like wow you would think that that would be more elite like making people like change their thoughts I don't know but that was a little confusing to me and I also thought that like Tristan's character who you were supposed to be like oh my god he's like the sweet beautiful little baby boy and everybody loves him I was just like he's so like boring I don't really understand like what necessarily the point of him is that's me cold-hearted bitch what's up let's see what else we had going on I mean I definitely think it was like insanely six of pros already talked about that hey what's up Oh, okay. So the love story between um, Severin and Layla, that's not a spoiler. It's like page one. Hello. Page one and done. There's no like backstory that made you understand what was going on between them. The only backstory was one night that they had shared a while ago that neither of them can shut the f up about. And I'm like, okay, but why? Like, where's the sexual tension? I mean, there was sexual tension. Like, I really liked it until I was like halfway through the book and I was like, what's y'all's deal like what is y'all's deal i don't know there just wasn't like a build-up like i really like like they are kind of a chasm and an edge care i get people are probably gonna be so upset at me that i keep talking about six or crows but like i've read the book and i'm here to tell you that i think it's like six of crows anyway they're like chasm and edge but chasm and edge i feel like you got like kind of a little bit of a build-up of like their backstory and like why they fell in love with each other or why they're so interested in each other but these two characters i'm like you're not giving me enough to like build on anyway okay um okay so i wrote characters and characters because i really liked the characters but then again i didn't feel like there was enough like I, it was like i thought there was enough but then again there wasn't enough i was like they're good but they weren't enough to like make me fall in love i was like on the border of falling in love but not enough and for a character-based story i wanted there to be just like a little bit more 
But then there was, I don't know, I liked it, but then again, it wasn't enough. Like, I really like that Sophia, I, it's never said, the label is not said, but it's pretty clear that she's autistic. And I really liked that representation. I thought that was really good. And like, I don't know. I, I really like that. Anyway, I already talked about that Tristan. I was just like, and Hypnos. Hypnos is one of my favorite characters I've ever read. Like, let's talk about the other characters being like, okay, Hypnos a god among men. A god among men. I'm literally obsessed. He reminded me a lot of like Helios. Helos? Helios? Yeah. From Akatar. Hypnos is everything. He is everything. I love him. He literally would like bust in and just be like, worship me. I'm beautiful and stunning and I have the most Leo energy in the universe. Like he's such a Leo. It's He is the sun. And how dare you? call him anything else but the biggest star in the galaxy like he is a king and I'm obsessed with him so I think I'm gonna give this four stars even I might give it three and a half I think I'm gonna give it four yeah I'm gonna give it four because I'm being too judgmental there are so many things about this book that are absolutely stunning and I'm definitely gonna keep this I will reread it in the future if if I like the second book, even like enough to give it three stars, this is a series I will reread in the future. I think I will like it more upon a reread when I already know kind of what's going on. But I think I've been talking about this too much. Um, I'm going to end this clip for today and hopefully pick something different else up tomorrow. Hey, I didn't read anything yesterday, but hopefully today I'm going to be picking up crying in H Mart and I put my makeup on before work and then was like am I gonna put my headphones in listen to this book after I just put my makeup on and walk into work crying because I've heard that the beginning of the book is like super sad I mean I've heard the whole book is sad but people were like yeah I started crying immediately so hmm we're gonna see I'll, I'll let you know but I picked up two boxes at my P.O. box and the first one is my first Nespresso order I'm gonna just tell you what I got went a little hog wild because they have like a discount for your first order. So the first thing I got was the hazelnut muffin. Now I was kind of like, I don't know, because I love hazelnut so much. You already know that, but I wanted to get espresso and not coffee, but I was like, listen, they have a hazelnut flavor. I'm going to get it. So I got one sleeve of those. And then I got a couple sleeves of the Dia Dia Valito, And it's the espresso. That's like the really high on the intensity scale, like the flavor intensity. Um, and I think that, is that the one that's a double espresso or are these a single? These are the double, I think. Um, no, no, those are single. Katie, get it together. The double espresso is the Scuro, and this is an eight out of 11. I got two boxes of those. And this is 11 out of 11. Wow, okay. We don't do anything half-assed, listen. And then I also got the decaf intenso, which is seven out of 11 and it's decaf espresso pods. So espresso, whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. Anyway, I got a bunch of pods. Okay, a lot of sleeves. And then I also got, it came with this little like sampler because I guess I got so many sleeves and it's vanilla custard pie coffee and caramel cookie coffee. Now, oh, this is cute. Look at that. She is precious. That's adorable. Okay. I don't think I'm going to like either of these because I don't like vanilla cut. I don't like vanilla. Don't like custard. I'm not a big fan of caramel either. Um, anyway, but we'll try it out and I'll let you know at some point, maybe in this vlog. Anyway, the other thing that I picked up, I don't know what it is. This could very well be something that I bought myself because I have been getting my packages sent to my PO box because they've been getting stolen off of my front door, like very fast. And my roommate was like, hey, I have like three packages that are supposed to get delivered today, like from American Eagle. Can you check for them? And I walked outside. I was like, there's nothing here. She was like, it says they were delivered like two hours ago. I was like, why does this keep happening? People in my apartment complex, somebody sucks. Anyway, we're going to open this. It is a little bit of an odd shape for a book, but you know, never say never. Hi, Katie. I've been wanting to send you something for a while now, and I have almost to say they're, they're bookends. They're one second. Um, I love all your content so much. Thank you for your time and energy you put into everything from at black cats and paperbacks on Instagram. One, your Instagram handle 
perfection amazing okay which ones are they ah, i'm freaking out okay oh my god i'm so excited okay oh which ones can they be? oh oh my god yes 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 Oh my god, these are stunning and they're like hefty. I'm sorry, this noise is probably so annoying. Ugh. How do they? Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I <laughs> like this is gonna be my new thing in my videos, okay? If anything happens, I'm just gonna be like, give me some. That's right. Like Thank you so much. I am obsessed. Like, I'm just gonna go stare at these for a while. So I'm working an event, or I did work an event, as you can tell. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, I worked an event, and while I was setting it up, I was listening to Crying in H Mart, and then right now I'm listening to it again. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, like I know that this is, people are talking so well about this book, but it's really boring me. It's really boring me, I'm so bored, I'm so bored. It's, it is literally about a girl who lives in the United States, but her she's Korean and her mom is from Korea. Her dad is Caucasian. And um, her mom came over to America because of her father, or her husband, you know, the main character's father. And it's a true, I think this is like an autobiography. I think this is a true story because I think it might be narrated by the author. I need to look that up. I could be totally talking on my ass right now, but... Um, she loses her mom to pancreatic cancer and it's her going to H Mart and looking around because her and her mom had this connection with food and she's going to H Mart and being like seeing like older Korean women like grandmas and being like I wish that was my mom like my mom will never get a chance to have that and making food and looking at food and eating her feelings because she was like oh, her and her mom like that's the only time that she felt like her mom and her like had a connection um, because her and her mom had like a very like strenuous relationship uh, like a very like a lots of tension and um I'm 24 percent of the way in and all she has talked about is food I mean she's talked a lot about like her and her mom's relationship but like that's really it like talking about food and like how annoying her mom was I guess I don't know so many people have really loved this book and I'm like, I want to keep reading it, but I am so bored. And the fact that I just got out of a reading slump is really not making me want to read this book. Like I really, I don't know. But on a lighter note, I did get halfway through Fence, the graphic novel volume one. And you would have seen me doing that while they were in between courses out here and in between like watering their table and stuff. And that's really good. I'm really liking it. I love the art style. That's definitely for me. Um, I just love the feel of the book in my hand. It's amazing. So that is about, it's actually way better than I even thought. Like the, the plot is way better than I thought. It's like, I'm not going to spoil it, but like, it's about this boy who really, really wants to be like a famous Olympic fencer. And he goes to a tournament and his, the first round is him and this other boy. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's S-E-I-J-I. -I. I've just been saying Seiji, but I know that's wrong. I need to look it up how to pronounce it. Um, but the first round he goes against like the most talented player and loses astronomically and is absolutely like just gutted because the guy's like bullying him, making fun of him. Like, you're so far below me. Like, I can't believe you can even see me. And then the main character never forgets it and makes it his whole life goal basically to like beat this guy at a championship. 
So he studies really hard, does all this stuff, and um, wants to go against him, ends up getting into the same college as him, but only one freshman is picked a year. So one of them is the only one that's gonna get on the team. And since he, the main character is a scholarship student, if he doesn't get on the team, he loses scholarship, he has to go back home. So it's, it's a lot. And then also their roommates, and I mean, as you can surmise, um, I'm sure from the tone of this book, I have heard it's a gay love story. And I'm here for it. I'm really here for it. I really am. It's cute. I really like it. Um, I don't know anything about fencing. I'm not here for the fencing. I don't care about sports like at all, but I'm here for the rivalry. Really here for it. So that's really good. While I clean the room, I might keep listening to H Mart. I don't know. I just, I'm not feeling it. I'll hit you up later with what I end up doing. Okay, I'm back home now. I'm 40 something percent of the way into crying in H Mart, and I just, I don't care. I don't, I just, I don't care. Like, it's just really boring to me. It's really boring. And I just feel like the same exact emotion has been going on for 40 percent of the book. It's the same emotion. Like, it's just the same, like, oh, this will happen. And when it does, I'll be sad. And then just like this, like, grudging, like, annoyance and frustration and like disobedience with her mom but then being like well that's just the way she shows that she loves me i'm like you've been talking about that for like four hours i'm bored i'm like kind of confused why everybody gives it such a high rating i i don't care i'm dnfing it like i just really it has like a 4.41 on goodreads okay but it's so tedious. It's so tedious. I'm like, I'm sick of hearing about this. I don't want to hear about this anymore. I'm not saying it's a bad book. I think that I'm missing it. I'm clearly not catching it. So I am going to DNF that. And then, oh God, I guess I'll wait until tomorrow and pick up something new. Penguin Random House Audio presents the Hunting Wives by May Cobb. Read for you by Aaron Bennett. To my extraordinary mother, Liz, who told me the story that inspired this novel. You continue to inspire me each and every day. And to my fabulous husband, Chuck, who guided me out of the depths of writer's block by saying, well, you better write something. This one's for you. Prologue. I keep seeing her face, upturned in the pool. Her long hair darkened by the water, stringing and tangled and noodling around her neck. Her eyes are closed, her body floating. Her lips are parted just slightly and it looks as if she's resting, tranquil and at peace. Of course, it wasn't like that at all. Her body was found face down in a puddle of mud-soaked leaves. A shotgun blast had shredded her back. She was slumped down next to the edge of the lake, and near the silty shoreline, the lake water is the color of rust, not a sparkling turquoise. But the pool was the first place I saw her. A week later, she was dead. I actually ended up getting to page 100 of this book last night, which I am so incredibly shocked but gabby from gabby reads is so incredibly right about this book like it's so fast-paced it's so fast-paced like you're just like reading reading like reading reading reading, and then you're like oh my god did i just read 20 pages in like the blink of an eye good god um which is shocking for me but i'm obsessed with this cover i want to give it a moment real quick like this is another one of those books where i'm like the marketing of this book like whoever designed this cover did it perfectly because this is the vibes of the book like perfectly matches the vibes now i am kind of confused because i am like 100 pages in of a 350 page book and i still don't actually know what's going on like what the big thing is going to be because this is about a girl who moves back moves back to her hometown or no she doesn't her husband moves to this like suburban town and she moves with him one of those anyway she moves back and there is a bunch of like suburban moms that are like late 30s to like early 40s and they have like a hunting club this like very secret like fight club where they go out and shoot their guns and our main character i don't know what it is that she's feeling for this girl named Margot, this like really like 
elite this elite bitch you know this like beautiful rich gorgeous woman named Margot. it's like it's kind of like sophia like the main character of this book it's like it's like sophie has a crush on her but then is also like astronomically obsessed with her like the hand who rocks a cradle you know what i'm saying like she's like it's not right like the way that she's obsessed with this woman it's 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 a stalker like she's definitely being stalkery i find that so incredibly interesting because not only do you have all this like secret mystery suspicion paranoia of what's actually going on with these hunting wives and what their deal really is but then you also have the main character being super sus super like stalkery like just not right so you've got it coming from every angle and then it says in the summary that they're gonna find a body and it's gonna kind of tie back to them somehow I don't know, haven't gotten to that part yet, and I'm already like a third of the way through the book. I don't know, but I'm having a lot of fun, and I'll see how much I can get done today. Okay, I finished Fence Volume 1 yesterday, and let's just say one thing real quick. Johanna the Mad, the illustrator, that's like the dopest name I've ever heard in my freaking life. Also, I love that they put they put the covers, like, or well, one, variants of covers, but they put the covers of the next couple volumes, and like, that is the hottest thing I've ever seen. Like, that is so hot. And then like, are you kidding me? Bad boy alert. That is amazing. Anyway. I really liked this. I really liked it. I'm, I don't know if I would give it a five star only because it, it's only one volume. I was about to say not that much happens, but it's only one volume. So I don't really feel like I can say that. I really think it was a really good introduction. I feel like the introduction of all the characters was really good. I like their dynamic with each other. I think that the plot line of like um these fencers like having this rivalry of like this is all I've thought about for the past like year or three years was like just being able to get into the school so that I can fight you and finally win like that's my life goal like that is hot oops let's just pick you back up off the floor there um that's hot that's amazing I love the illustration I think this guy's face is literally so hot I love it I love the birthmark he's freaking gorgeous okay I can't anyway um that's amazing I I just really like it it was good um I think I'm gonna give it a four and a half and then I want to continue on I tried to pick up the second volume on Libby because it was available immediately but Libby has it where you like read it on landscape instead of portrait and I want to read it on portrait so I can read like one page at a time so basically it'd be like I was just reading this but instead I'm reading it like this and it's just way too tiny and I don't like that. So I'm going to see if I can get it on Kindle, like transfer it to my Kindle and see about that and try to read the second volume. I really am interested, but I'm never actually going to read it in landscape mode. So no. And then also I got to, let's see, I got halfway through, I'm on chapter 40 of The Hunting Wives and I love it and the whole like the whole plot based event has happened where they have found someone dead and you're trying to figure out what's going on and I'm already reading this like so sure about certain people that I think are involved unless everybody I'm always sitting here thinking like everyone is involved I'm like it's everybody all of them all of them are in on it 
But um, there's some people that I'm like, I don't know. Sus, if you ask me. But one thing I really like about the about this book is that it takes the trope of like you know when there's like uh like the rich, beautiful, like badass woman that is flirting and manipulating all the men. So that is uh, Margot in this book. But Sophie, the main character, is also obsessed with her and that's what I think is so amazing is that they take this the trope of the badass like femme fatale of Margot and make her bisexual so not only is she doing it to men but she's and um teenagers but she's also doing it to women and it's like all these women that are like her groupies are like in love with her that's amazing like that's amazing and also the fact that the main character Sophie is bisexual and it's like she doesn't call herself that but she's like I mean I've slept with a woman before but like I'm like totally straight I'm like Okay. Sure. <laughs> sure, Jan. Got it. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's so amazing. I'm only halfway through and I'm really liking it. I hope that it stays this good until the end because I'm definitely agreeing with Gabby right now. This book is fantastic and I need to finish it today to wrap up this vlog. So I'm going to do a lot of errands today. So I think I'll be able to do it. Here's toping. Oh wow, I actually finished The Hunting Wives while I was grocery shopping, which is so wild. Like I was listening to it um, today when I put my makeup on and then I ended up spending a very long time at the grocery store. Like hours, like embarrassing, way too long. And then I also spend a really long time putting the groceries into my car and then also putting them into the um, fridge and everything because I'm way too meticulous. But when I say I spend a long time at the grocery store, <laughs> look at this. Um, what? It's double stacked. Don't let that fool you. I bought a lot. Um, one, because I haven't gone to the grocery store in quite a while, but then also because I was going to a different grocery store than I normally go to, which was just a random decision because the light was, uh, not working to make a left to go to the Target I usually go to, but to make a right to go a couple extra miles to go to the Kroger that light was working. So I was like, all right, well, let's just go to the Kroger. And I don't normally go there. So they had some stuff I don't normally buy. And when I go somewhere where I'm not used to the layout of the grocery store, I'm very, I'm like so habitual that it makes me neurotic. Like not knowing where I'm going to get the kind of cheese that I want, because at this Kroger, there's four different places they put cheese. Four? That's too much. And I need all the options in one go. Like this is too much, it's too much. Anyway, so clearly, I overspent, overbought, overpurchased, but cool. One and the other reason that I ended up doing that is because Grace gave me a really good idea. And because I have the Nespresso machine, which I'm really liking, um, she was like, you know what you need to do is you need to figure out a way to remake the turkey sausage wake up wraps that I, I so love from there. And I don't know how they make their turkey sausage wake up, make wake up wraps that have so few calories and carbs in it, like comparatively. Cause when I went to the store, all the individual ingredients have so many. And I'm like, what? I don't know. Anyway, so I didn't buy turkey sausage. I bought meatless sausage because something that Grace and I were both saying is that we have both tried the regular sausage wake up wraps and like the bacon wake up wraps and stuff like that. And they're way too salty. Like regular meat just has like regular breakfast meat just has way too much salt in it. So the turkey sausage and the meatless sausage just taste way better. I mean, like I'm not a vegetarian, but a lot of vegetarian options just do genuinely taste better. So I bought two different versions of that. And then I bought some, uh, tortillas, which have so many carbs in it, which I don't like because like flattening bread just makes it have, it doesn't make it less bread, just makes it a flatter version of bread. It has more carbs in it. Anyway, whatever. And then I bought like, I'll show you when I get home, when I go to make one, but that was a really good idea. So that's another reason why I went to the grocery store. Why am I talking so much about the grocery store? You know what you want to know about? The f***ing buck. Okay, so The Hunting Wives. It was so fast. It was so fun. I am struggling on whether I'm going to give this a four or a five. I think I might end up giving, uh, might end up giving this. I don't know. The re Okay, I feel like it is like a four star book, but the level of like bisexuality and the bisexual femme fatale, the, there is like lesbian sex that happens in this book. We love to see it. And I mean, obviously it's like 
they're both bisexual, but you know what I'm saying. It's a fe sorry, it's not a lesbian sex scene. It's like a it's a female female sex scene of two bisexuals. What? I'm obsessed. What? Love it. There's lesbians. There's um, bisexual characters. There is no gay men. I, none of the men. Nobody even talks about them. Who cares about the men? Um. Well, honestly, her husband was really sweet. Graham, I was like, you don't deserve this, bro. You don't deserve this. Like, you're a good guy. Shockingly. It's a murder mystery, and there's a guy that's not a, like, piece of shit. I'm shook. Anyway. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I think that the plot twist, or not the plot, I mean the plot twist, but, like, the who done it, like, why this body, the body that ends up getting found, like, why that was happening, and what the whole storyline behind that I didn't really care all that much I was just like oh okay like cool because it just kind of tied in with like some characters that like I didn't really care about it wasn't the characters that like I was invested in so for me that was a little lackluster but it was still good just personally you know so I think I'm gonna end up giving it a four star but then still heavily recommend it to people. Like it was a really good time, very fast read. Like you could honestly finish this in one day. Like you could definitely finish this in one day. I literally read like 40% of the book in the grocery store and had a great time. So yeah, four stars. Little twist happened. Um, I put on a less revealing shirt cause it's raining outside. And because Grace called me at 3 PM saying that she couldn't find her iPhone and she went into this thrift store over here and she called me back just now. Well, she called me at seven o'clock and was like, I still can't find it. And she's using the Find My iPhone on her laptop, but that needs Wi Fi. And she's having to go to places that have Wi Fi, like the Dunkin' Donuts that's like down the street. And she's like, it keeps moving. I don't know. And I was like, oh my God, girl, I didn't even think about that. Like, I'm getting in my car right now and she lives like 25 minutes away from me. So it's 7.45 now because it's it was raining so people were going really slow and she's about to pull up right now but I'm gonna see if I can use my phone to find her iPhone because it says it's in the area. Grace was like, I will confront a bitch. And I was like, I know you will. You're a Cancer with a Leo moon. Like, stop scaring me. This is our girl Grace. I'm sure she's super annoyed. Okay, so we're gonna try to help her because there's only 15 minutes left that the thrift store is even open. Grace, what did you find? How many hours did it take? <laughs> Four hours? Oh yeah, I've been here since three o'clock and it's like eight o'clock. It's 7.53 right now. Oh Lord. But you know what? You didn't have to buy a new phone. Yeah. You didn't have to go to the store. You didn't have to go to someone's house and beat them up, bang on their door, give me my phone back. <laughs> she was this close. <laughs> Literally there was a van that was parked right there. And Grace was like, it says it's inside their van. <laughs> <laughs> it's inside their van. I was literally like waving inside people's windows like, Oh they're my like, they're like, no? <laughs> no. Look, well, you see it? It's a rainbow. You see the rainbow? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Go. Oh, that was good. Oh my God. Wait, do one more time. Oh, yes. Ooh. You've made it friends and we're here to do a little recap because I actually have to amend some of my reviews from before but before all of that we are going to test out our homemade wake-up wrap and this is not with turkey sausage it's with 
Beyond Meat, I don't know, Gather, I don't remember what it was called, Garden Meatless Sausage, something like that. Let's see, okay. I'm gonna show myself out. What? I fucking crushed it. Hello? I, I killed it. It could use a little bit more salt. Just throw a little little skosh, a little skosh, let me see. A little skosh of salt. This is a delight. I really didn't, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting to love it. And here I am, obsessed. Back to your regularly scheduled amending what I said before. Program. I'm sorry, this keeps happening. Remember earlier at the very beginning of the video when you heard that? That's because that was like 10 minutes ago and now I'm trying to eat. That's the noise that happens on my phone and on my watch when my blood sugar is low. That's what um, this thing does. This is my blood sugar um, monitor, my CGM continuous glucose monitor. So this tells me what my blood sugar is. It sends it to my phone, which sends it to my watch, but because I'm using my watch right now, it's doing it on my phone. So it beeps loudly letting me know that my blood sugar is 80 or lower which is what it is right now anyway let's move on we're not talking about diabetes we're talking about literature and what we're gonna do is the gilded wolves i i really like here's the thing i kind of want to amend all of these to a four and a half where before i'd given all of them a four i kind of want to give these all a four and a half like this is the only one that i'm like should i just keep this at a four i don't know because here's the thing I already spoke a lot about this one and kind of amended my statement about that one before, but the hunting wives, I do want to give this like a four and a half or even a five. Like I'm really struggling on what to do. I think I'm going to give it a five and then in the notes, give it a four and a half because this is such a good time. It's such a good time. I highly recommend it. And even though the ending lacked a little bit of luster, it lacked a little bit of luster. The rest of it is so much fun. It's such a good ride. The chapters are really short. I think the audiobook is great. I think that the physical reading experience is great. I did both. It was really good. I really loved this. I think that the whole, um, there's this whole like femme fatale flipped on its head and it's like a woman seducing other women, but then also sedu seducing men. I thought that was fantastic. So well done. Really loved it. I love that this was like all done in this, um, southern suburban texas housewife atmosphere that was fantastic i really loved it um i don't know i just thought this was really good and i think that earlier i was being way too critical about it and then the other one i was being way too critical about was fence i don't even think that i really gave you like a good enough review about this this is like my favorite trope is rivals to lovers like i love an enemies to lovers but let's be more specific and it's rivals to lovers and i had like Excuse you? Thank you. And good night. Okay, we're live. Um, this has my favorite thing, and that's rivals to lovers, because I had a come to Jesus little like moment talking to Grace, where whenever I talk to her, I'll realize like maybe what I'd said about a book was like too nice or maybe not nice enough because what I'll do is when I talk about it with her, if I don't have passion when I'm talking about it, then I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. And if I had more passion than I thought, then I liked it more than I thought I did. And when I was talking about this book, I was raving about this graphic novel. And earlier, I don't feel like I was raving about it. And it's way better than I had previously said. And that is because what Grace said, where I was like, wow, you just nailed it for me, is she was like, I said, oh, I think I like Rivals to Lovers more than Enemies to Lovers. And she said, yeah, of course you do. That's why you're obsessed with carry on. And I was like, okay, why? And she said, because you're obsessed with mutual respect. And I was like, who, who runs this channel? Who runs my opinions? Who runs my life? It's not me. It's a girl that looks like me. Grace Cox. Um, yeah, she's right. I am obsessed with mutual respect. Not only like as an, um, 
asexual but also as a type six i am really obsessed with mutual respect i love respect i love loyalty love it oh my god love intellectual romance i just think it's amazing and in this there's so much like hate respect and it's so hot and i love it and there's also a character in here that's like the really overconfident cocky sexy character that like gets with everyone and when i mean everyone i mean everyone because it's not just a guy that's getting with all the girls it's a guy that's getting with all the guys too and I think that's so hot. And then there's also, there's a line in this that is so sexy. And I freaking love it. Okay. Okay, the, the really um, sexy, confident guy says, um, oh, I've seen you fence. So I can say this with certainty. You're better than me. And I'm still going to beat you. He's like, you're better than me. But I'm still going to win. I was like, that's hot. That's hot. And also, can, have, have I talked about how sexy this guy is? That's, that's sexy. That's really sexy. And then also something that's even hotter than that, <laughs> that you couldn't have guessed it. Uh, that. That's some hot shit. That is like the freaking blade to the throat. Okay, this thing is trying to show me out. It's trying to like, like take out of here. Okay, because I need to eat my freaking wrap. Um, we need another name than wake up wrap. I almost said crap up rap. I don't know what I'm doing. Leave me a comment with a cute other name than wake up rap because it's like ours, you know? It's our thing. We discovered this together. We made like Dunkin' Donuts at home in our vlogs. I love that for us. Okay, if you've gotten this far into the vlog, not only leave that comment, but then also what emoji should we leave? If there's a fencer, leave a fencer. And if you can't find that, or if there isn't one, leave the lipstick emoji. That's so cute, fun, fresh love it okay um also if you've gotten this far in the video clearly you like something about it and if you want to go ahead and subscribe that button is within your reach and that would be very amazing if you did so i will also have my instagram and my goodreads link down below if you want to follow me on either of those platforms you're going to get bookish content that you're not going to find on this youtube channel also there will be a myriad of other links down below if you want to use any of those that would be great and all of that said have an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever you're having, and I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye. Mmm. Katie, you're a culinary wizard. This is so good. Oh my god, and wine? Breakfast or dinner? Girl. Mmm.